What's up everybody? Landon with Late Model Restoration. It's time for round three, covering the Ford Performance Power Packs for the 2015 to 2017 S550 Mustang GTs. This video will cover my review, install, and dyno runs on the Stage 3 Power Pack from Ford Performance. If you're in the market for more horsepower and torque out of your 2015 to 2017 5.0 Mustang and you want to keep things simple and clean in the process, you should definitely check out this Stage 3 Power Pack from Ford Performance. This Power Pack is going to feature the same throttle body, cold air intake, and intake manifold found on the GT350 Mustang. And, if, and of course, an exclusive calibration for this particular setup. The throttle body features an 87 millimeter opening versus the factory 80 millimeter to allow more air in, therefore resulting in more power. The cold air intake arrives pre-assembled with a high flow paper filter, inlet tube, and air box. Topping off the components list is the GT350 intake manifold. Like the cold air intake, this manifold arrives pre-assembled with all needed EVAP lines and IMRC assembly. Aside from those three key components, this kit includes Ford Performance's ProCal tool. This tool allows for calibrations of both manual and automatic transmissions. Manual Mustang owners will get an exclusive no-lift shift strategy, which by the way works extremely well, while automatic owners get increased line pressure for faster, more positive shifts. The ProCal tool increases throttle response to the throttle body, allows adjustment of rear end gears if you plan on switching those out later on down the road, and the ability to read diagnostic trouble codes. When you open the box, you'll find the GT350 throttle body, GT350 cold air intake, GT350 manifold, and of course the ProCal tool, all needed installation hardware, calibration sheet with code, and instructions. Keep in mind when purchasing this kit, a laptop, computer, and internet is required to operate the ProCal tool for whenever you flash the PCM with the Ford Performance calibration. On that note, Ford Performance requires a minimum of 91 octane when running this Stage 3 power pack. Ford Performance does rate this kit at 37 peak horsepower and 5 pound-feet of torque over a factory car. This Stage 3 kit is 50 state legal and retains the vehicle's warranty as long as an authorized Ford dealership completes the install. For more information on the warranty, click the link in the video description or check out the product page. Okay guys, I'm going to get our 2015 Mustang GT on the dyno and get a baseline pull. The only modification to the car as it sits is a Ford Performance GT350 catback exhaust with the sport mufflers. Other than that, this car is a performance pack car, so it's a 6-speed MT82 manual and has 373 rear end gears. For a good starting point before the Stage 3 Power Pack, our 2015 GT managed to make 395 horsepower at 6,500 RPMs and 370 pound-feet of torque at 3,900 RPMs. Those are SAE corrected numbers with a fifth gear pull and 93 octane fuel. Alright fellas, I'm now going to show you the detailed steps on installing the Stage 3 Power Pack onto your 2015 to 2017 5.0 equipped Mustang. To begin, push the center release tabs on each side of the rear seat cushion. Lift up on the cushion and disconnect the fuel pump driver module connection. This is located on the driver's side. Start the car and allow it to idle until it stalls. Remove the battery cover and disconnect the negative and positive cables. Position the positive cables out of the way so you can remove the strut tower brace if it's equipped. Remove the four 15 millimeter retaining nuts securing the strut tower. There are two per side. Set the strut tower brace aside. Lift up on the engine cover to remove it from the factory manifold. Release the red lock tab on the mass airflow sensor connection and then disconnect it. Remove the push pin from the air box and position the connection out of the way. Remove the air box to inner fender bolt with a 10 millimeter socket. Disconnect the vacuum and driver side PCV connections on the intake. Use a pair of pliers or a hose clamp tool to remove the clamp securing the sound tube to the factory inlet elbow. Pry it free from the air box and then the strut tower. Use a 10 millimeter stubby ratchet wrench to remove the nut on the firewall that secures the sound tube. Once the nut is free, pull out on the tube to remove it from the car. Go ahead and plug the hole with the provided firewall plug. Loosen the hose clamp on the factory inlet elbow with a seven millimeter nut driver. Pull out on the elbow and remove the factory air intake from the car. Slide the red locking tab out and then disconnect the throttle body electrical connection. 
and remove the four throttle body retaining bolts with an eight millimeter socket and a six inch extension. Set these bolts aside since they will be reused later. Remove the passenger side PCV line or oil separator if equipped. Disconnect the EVAP solenoid electrical connection. Slide back the green lock tab and then remove the EVAP line from the solenoid. Then use a hose clamp tool or a pair of pliers to remove the brake booster hose from the intake manifold. Remove the four 10 millimeter retaining nuts that secure the heater hose supports. On the passenger side, carefully pull the hose out and away of the support and foam cover. Remove the support and foam from the fuel rail and set them aside. Disconnect all eight of the fuel injector electrical connections. Remove the vacuum tube from the brake booster and then remove it from the car. Grab some safety glasses and old rags. Position the rags underneath the fuel line. Push the blue tab in and then pull out on the fuel line to remove it from the rail. Go ahead and remove the supply line from the fuel rail. Wrap the line with some rags and position it out of the way. Clean up any fuel that ran out and then cap the fuel rail. Remove these six intake manifold to cylinder head bolts with an eight millimeter socket and six inch extension. There are three per side. Then remove the four fuel rail retaining bolts with a 10 millimeter socket. There are two per side. At the back of the intake manifold, disconnect the two IMRC solenoid connections. Pick the intake manifold up and bring it forward as much as it will go. Disconnect the two white IMRC center connections. There are one of these per side. Then release the two cable ties that secure the wiring harness to the back of the intake manifold. Once those are free, remove the intake from the car. Use some quality brake clean and a clean rag to clean the top of the cylinder heads. Tape all the open intake ports on the cylinder heads. On the rear wiring harness, cut away the electrical tape to free the black electrical connection. Now cut open the convoluted tubing to expose the wires. Remove the electrical tape and then separate the IMRC solenoid connection wires from the exposed harness. These are going to be the two blue connections. Unwrap the harness tape from the wires so that the two connections are now free floating. Retape the main harness. Use some of your own convoluted tubing to cover the exposed wires. Secure the convoluted tubing with electrical tape. Take this time to cover any exposed wire with additional electrical tape. Cut away the electrical tape on the blue and white IMRC connections. Retape the black harness connection to the main harness in the same way before you made the modifications. On the factory manifold, pull up on the fuel rails to remove the injectors. Take this time to clean the tips of the injectors. Remove the two vacuum lines on the IMRC solenoids and rotate the line out of the way. Position the fuel rail and injectors into place. Press down firmly to seat them into the new manifold. Reposition the vacuum line and reinstall the two hoses back onto the IMRC solenoids. On the factory manifold, remove the passenger side PCV inlet by removing the eight millimeter retaining bolt. Clean the inlet if necessary and then position it into the GT350 manifold. Use the provided hardware since this is now fine thread instead of coarse thread. Torque the bolt to 89 inch pounds. Go ahead and repeat these steps for the EVAP solenoid. Remove the two retaining bolts, clean the solenoid and position it into the GT350 manifold. Use the provided hardware to secure it and then torque to 89 inch pounds. On the back of the new GT350 manifold, notice the two cable tie provisions. These are closer together than they are on the factory manifold. Use the provided gray 25 millimeter offset cable tie on the driver's side of the harness and position it roughly three quarters inches to the inside of the black cable tie. Then use the provided gray 12 and a half millimeter offset cable tie on the passenger side of the harness and position it roughly one inch to the inside of the white cable tie. Go ahead and cut the cable tie ends. Remove the tape from the cylinder head intake ports and give them one final wipe down to ensure they are free of any foreign material. Position the GT350 intake manifold onto the cylinder heads. Position the manifold so that the front is tilted up. Reconnect the two IMRC sensor connections. These are the white connectors with locking tab. 
Before fully seating the manifold, be sure in position to grade cable ties into the provisions on the back of the GT350 manifold. Once that is done, you can now fully seat the manifold onto the cylinder heads. Connect your two IMRC solenoid connections. These are the blue connectors and the ones that you had to extend. Hand tighten the six manifold to cylinder head bolts. Then torque in two stages. First stage being 106 inch pounds, starting with the center bolt on the passenger side. Then the center bolt on the driver's side, followed by the rear bolt on the passenger side, then the rear bolt on the driver's side. Lastly will be the front bolt on the passenger side, and then the front bolt on the driver's side. Now, rotate each bolt an additional 35 degrees in the same torque sequence. Reinstall and hand tighten the fuel rail retaining bolts. Starting with the passenger side front bolt, torque to 89 inch pounds. Then the driver's side front, passenger side rear, and lastly, the driver's side rear bolt. Rotate each bolt an additional 90 degrees in the same torque sequence. Reconnect all the fuel injector electrical connections. Reinstall the foam fuel rail covers. On the passenger side, reinstall the heater hose support, reposition the hose, and then torque the previously removed 10 millimeter nuts to 62 inch pounds. Take the factory vacuum tube and slide back the two hose clamps. Remove the plastic fitting that was installed into the brake booster grommet. Go ahead and install it into the provided vacuum tube on the side that has the longer hose. Position the driver's side heater hose support followed by the vacuum tube mounting tabs. Reposition the heater hose and then torque the two 10 millimeter retaining nuts to 62 inch pounds. Pull the release pin from the hose clamp to secure the plastic fitting. Rotate the fitting so that it aligns with the grommet in the booster. Then go ahead and push the fitting into the grommet. Position the other end of the vacuum tube over the inlet port on the GT350 manifold and release the pin from the hose clamp. Reinstall the strut tower brace if equipped and then torque the nuts to 41 pound feet. Cut away the electrical tape on the throttle body electrical connection. Then untape 90 degrees from the EVAP purge harness. Remove the red lock with a small pick. Release the pins one at a time and transfer them to the provided connector. On the new connector, remove the white lock. Transfer the wires in the same orientation as they are on the old connector. Once that's complete, go ahead and reinstall the white lock. Connect the included EVAP jumper. Then, carefully pry up on the 90 degree plastic retainer. Remove it from the old connector and transfer it to the connector on the EVAP solenoid. Use electrical tape and tape the wires over the retainer. Position the GT350 throttle body into place and hand tighten the previously removed bolts. Torque to 89 inch pounds, working in a cross pattern. Follow that with an additional 60 degree rotation, working in the same pattern. Connect the throttle body electrical connection and slide the tab to the lock position. Connect the EVAP line. Grab the GT350 cold air intake and make two cuts in the rubber seal. Position the cold air intake into the car and make sure the rubber seal that you just cut is angled down. Slide the inlet tube over the throttle body and secure the box with the previously removed retaining bolt. Tighten the hose clamp that secures the inlet elbow to the throttle body. Next, drill a small hole in the air box and attach the harness clip. Detach the small harness clip on the fender and utilize the included zip tie to secure the harness. Reconnect the mass airflow sensor connection. Install the provided driver side PCV tube. Reinstall the previously removed passenger side PCV connection or oil separator. Install the provided foam seal with the larger, firmer piece of foam on the filter side. Have some rags ready and remove the vacuum cap from the fuel rail. Reconnect the fuel supply line. Reconnect the fuel pump driver module and then reposition the rear seat cushion. Reconnect the battery cables and reposition the battery cover. The factory intake manifold cover is not reused. Take this time to visually inspect your work and make sure everything is nice and tidy. Grab your laptop, ProCal tool, USB cable, and calibration sheet. Follow these simple instructions on the sheet to create a Ford Performance account and have access to download the ProCal software. Once that is finished, plug in the tool to the OBD2 port located just to the right of the driver's side kick panel. Plug the cable into the ProCal and then the laptop. 
Open the ProCal software and allow it to read the VIN. Enter the calibration code and download the file. Follow the on-screen instructions to program the vehicle. Allow the programming to finish and then unplug the ProCal from the OBD2 port. Everything is now installed and the PCM is flashed with the Ford Performance Calibration. Let's turn the rolls over one more time and see what she makes. I didn't have a doubt in my mind that this stage three power pack was going to let us down. The results simply speak for themselves, guys. Our yellow 5.0 managed to make 432 horsepower at 7,300 RPMs and 380 pound-feet of torque at 4,800 RPMs. Those numbers are good for 37 peak horsepower and 10 pound-feet of torque. Throughout the curve, the car picks up power and torque, but it's at the tail end of the run where the stage three power pack really starts to prevail. The stock components fall on their face around 6,600 RPM while the GT350 stuff is still climbing the ranks and manage, manages to make peak power at 7,300 RPMs and eventually taps out at 7,500. Remember guys, the dyno graphs are for video representation and it is also important to understand that individual results will vary from car to car. To put things into perspective, the Stage 3 Power Pack incorporates a GT350 cold air intake, GT350 throttle body, and GT350 intake manifold paired up with the Ford Performance Calibration. Drivability is perfect, fuel mileage is great, and if a Ford dealership completes the install, you retain your vehicle's warranty. That's a win-win, win. To see more great products from Ford Performance and to stay up to date with us here at Late Model Restoration, I invite you guys to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Of course, be sure and pick up this Ford Performance Day 3 Power Pack for your 2015 to 2017 Mustang GT from the real Mustang enthusiast, LMR.com.